Yo, hello, hello. Welcome to the elephant in the room. My name is Aaron and this is the second part of the chapter Moving Stuff and People Around of the book The Money Game and Beyond. So you might say or you might be inclined to think that trade was a useful tool in order for societies to evolve and to develop and I would agree with that but then we also cannot put aside all the negative effects that came in hand with trade. For example all the people who were enslaved by this system or all the people who died because of this system and also all the animals who were killed by this system. And then also the destruction of the environment that also came in hand with that system. So this is something we need to consider and take into account and this is something we are going to learn now. Because this trading system became more and more a global thing, like people were trading stuff from Europe to China, from China to Europe, from India to Europe and all over basically. This example is about the Silk Road which became a thing around 2000 years ago and people were trading all sorts of stuff like animals, clothes, textiles, wood, vegetables, metals, etc. And this route is called Silk Road because the Chinese figured out some 5000 years ago how to make um, silk and then they were trading it to Europe and to other places. But then there was a problem with using currency for trading in this period of time in security. So it is one thing to use a currency within a single tribe, but it's a different story when you try to use it globally. This is explained here. So if one tribe specializes on producing one thing and then the other tribe specializes on another thing that they produce and they are trading that with a currency like gold coins for example, they need to trust each other because otherwise it doesn't work. Like I need to trust the other tribe that I get for my let's say 50 gold coins, 100 cows. I need to trust the other um, tribe that they will give me those cows. And that worked but not all the time. Because for example if my tribe produces cows and then the other one produces weapons and then we are trading those things. So I have more and more weapons. Then I might be inclined to think and say why don't I just invade the other tribe enslave those people and they will keep producing weapons for me so why don't I just do that and this is something that many did throughout history all over the world basically. Also think about all those imperials and conquerors like Alexander the Great for example who invaded so many tribes and like enslaved those people who killed people just that their own empire gets bigger and bigger for example. So yeah, gold coins and other types began flying around the continents followed by moving stuff, goods purchased with the coins from tribe to tribe. The tribe with bigger armies and more coins were the ones with more advantage. But here's where trade had to evolve. Not only the trust between tribes, but also the trust of physically moving stuff around. For example, if China sends silk to Europe, they want to make sure that this silk is like getting to Europe safely and it will arrive there safely. So what they came up with is some sort of taxes. So they paid some people, soldiers, a little bit of money in order for them to make sure that those goods are arriving safely at where they are supposed to be. And the same thing applied to land. Like around 1500 years ago, half of Europe was not owned by anyone. But then people with coins and the power that they gave them had fences constructed around pieces of land, declared them as their own and then said to other people you can use that protected piece of land if you give us a percentage of your earning, of your stored value. And these taxes were a way of making trade safer and agriculture more useful. Once this protection became available, people could grow and produce more without fear of it being stolen. Back then people were stealing all sorts of things and for basically the same reasons they do it today. Lack of access to food, shelter and other needs. But now consider how the notion of stealing seems to apply to only some, but not to those who took the land that did not belong to them, fenced it in and put a tax on it. That's interesting to think about. 
Anyways, these taxes evolved as part of a provided service for protection, quality, safety, etc. But also as a mean of controlling people and society as a whole, in addition to making them more gold coins. And here, if you click on this link, you can read more details about the history of trade. So this one is about the frenzy because trading goods and services became completely crazy like materials were moved from Norway to Australia, foods grown in one part of the planet were moved to another one, African elephants and giraffes were brought to China, all those things. As long as you had an acceptable currency and could pay for something to be done, it would probably be done. And then as a result you get the primitive values of a relative few that became able to spark worldwide disaster. Why? If King Esho III wanted a giraffe, four lions, 45 personal slaves and 22 wives, then it was now easier than ever for him to get those things because he had the coins and other people would satisfy his wishes in order to get those coins. And as a further example of where this craziness could go, over 12 million people were brought from Africa to America to work as slaves to produce sugar, coffee and tobacco, resources that are not necessary for anyone's survival but important to the worldwide trade frenzy. The thirst for consumerism even made some slaves capture other slaves and sell them for money. So it just it became a crazy thing if you think about it. I'm also just thinking about colonialism where Europe had all those colonies around the world and they were killing people, they were enslaving people, all just because of this trade system. We always need to keep that in mind. And then we also need to think about that nothing really changed, like these structures are still in place. Like Europe is exploiting other countries, other tribes and is enslaving people and like for resources and so on. And this is something we are going to learn also in this book a little bit later, but let's continue. So the trade of goods and services may have started as a reasonable means of moving stuff around and providing greater access and abundance for more people, but it quickly escalated into an absurdly deranged worldwide trade anything system, changing nearly all people's values, working to survive and making a better life, to making more and more coins, to have more and more stuff. Billions of people and animals have died directly due to trade often by being worked too hard to produce or to carry stuff from one place to another, trying to protect stuff from others, their inability to afford stuff that was priced too high, and many were tortured, raped, enslaved, coerced and even executed in the name of this system. All of that for little more than filling up the stomachs of some and satisfying the body, food and comfort by growing up within a primitive value system that says making more and more golden coins is the goal, people have never thought to consider the impact of what they do. They just had that goal of making more and becoming more powerful. Trading stuff became like a drug and people quickly became addicted to it. The trade system also created the notion of jobs, like people had to sell their skills, and that led to the creation of schools to train people for becoming workers. Schooling was then confused with education by the public with people starting to think that ideally the school system was there to teach them about the world instead of preparing them for a job. And if I think back to my school time it was mostly boring as fuck and I just hated it to wake up every morning at 6 o'clock and go to school, I just didn't like that. So I also felt like my curiosity was not that encouraged or engaged but I mean I guess so many other people have similar experiences because of course these interconnected self-serving systems are still existent today. Another symptom of this trade system are wars because most wars if not all were about gaining resources to feed their tribes crazy wants and many of their needs and because of the thirst for power and for example over 60 million people were killed in World War II and around 21 to 25 million died of starvation and disease as a direct result of the war. Hunger and disease killed almost half as the warfare itself did. Even more goods and services are produced with the rise of mechanization like also think about the industrial revolution 
but that also allows the people with distorted values here it says the termite consumer to hoard and consume even more as if the planet's resources are infinite and of course advertising plays a huge role in that like if i think also about myself when i was younger i always wanted to have the newest iphone i wanted to have the newest macbook and the newest h&m shirt and zara jeans and so on but i learned that i mean i don't give a shit about those things anymore i rarely if ever buy something new like it doesn't fucking matter it just matters if you are a good human being if you do trade free things then you are the most amazing human being that is out there but i mean it is so hard and tricky because we live in a society where roughly 500 billion us dollars are spent on advertising nothing more than promoting products year after year after year and in contrast only about 200 billion us dollars are invested on renewable energies each year in a situation where experts say that if humans do not raise the investment to at least 1 trillion per year by 2030 we are screwed by the accumulation of climate change effects brought about by our fanatic use of fossil fuels so in effect moving stuff around became decoupled from reality long ago with near zero concern for the environment or the people but plenty for a functioning trade system we have been taught to call all of that the economy which is by definition the careful management of resources to avoid unnecessary expenditure or waste and it's something that we very much take for granted today we give these systems far too little thought mostly because so-called experts say that the way it works is very complicated they are right of course because of the massive amount of rules that have been applied to this worldwide trade system and this is also a very important point because when i was at school i had economics like i even went into abitur in economics and i was reading a lot of texts i was learning some formulas i was calculating some stuff but eventually what i realized is that it is all just based on trade and this is the problem so economics is more like a religion like people who are into economics they calculate some stuff they believe in the economy in the free market they believe in wall street they believe in consumerism like as if we can consume infinitely on a finite planet that's just not working and they call themselves professors and have all those phds and there's also this thing i can just show it to you it's the homo economicus um, this is something that i also had in the like economics lesson that i had in school it's basically a model of human beings who are consistently rational and narrowly self-interested and who pursue their subjectively defined ends optimally and of course that's not the case like human beings or human behavior is complex and it's always defined or influenced by the environment so yeah that's my little input but let's really learn more about this business and the economy we're gonna do that in the next video we will also discover how we can make coins out of coins which is <laughs> which is completely insane so yeah see you then in the next video as always i'm just gonna say take care and much love